Hi, this is Philip Ador, founder of NTLEX RN 45 Day Challenge. In this video, I'm going to be talking about hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoid plexus are normal anatomical structures located with the anal canal. If the hemorrhoid plexi enlarge, they can protrude outside the anal canal causing symptoms. It is important to know that the hemorrhoid plexi essentially are the veins. The rectal veins forming a plexus, so when we think of the hemorrhoids, we have to remember veins. Now, let's compare the normal with the abnormal. We need to review the anatomy. So the pectinate line is also known as the dentate line is clinically important landmark due to the fact that it is visible and approximates the level of certain anatomical changes. And these changes I'm talking about are embryological in origin. So anything above the pectinate line we say is endoderm in origin and anything below the pectinate line and is ectoderm in origin. And why does this matter? Well, if it's endoderm in origin, which is above the pectinate line, it means that it is essentially part of the abdominal organs. And so pain could very be diffused and not really localized. However, if it's an ectoderm in the origin, so the cells below the pectinate line or the ectoderm in origin means essentially the skin. So when pain occurs below the pectinate line within the ectoderm area, this will cause a very localized pain and quite painful pain for that matter. There are muscles also surrounding the anal canal. These are the internal sphincter muscles, which is controlled involuntarily, and then the external anal sphincter, which is under voluntary control. Hemorrhoid plexi are here, and there is an external and internal hemorrhoid plexus. And again, these are normal anatomical structures in the conditions known as the hemorrhoids. This plexi enlarge and can cause serious discomfort. Enlargement can be from external hemorrhoids or from internal hemorrhoids. And the internal hemorrhoids are located above the pectinate line. These signs and symptoms of hemorrhoids differ a bit depending if it's an external hemorrhoid or if it's an internal hemorrhoid. An internal hemorrhoid can often be painless, but there can be feeling of rectal fullness or discovered and mucus discharge. External hemorrhoids are quite painful. It can cause sudden severe perianal pain and perineal mass might be at felt. And there can be pain on the defecations and particularly if the thrombosis occurs within the external hemorrhoids. And again, it makes sense because external hemorrhoids are below the pectinate line. And as we know, below the pectinate line is the ectoderm in origin and so it is a very well localized pain. The risk factors for developing hemorrhoids include increased intra-abdominal pressure, severe constipations, pregnancy, obesity, portal hypertensions, and heavy lifting. All of these essentially cause some form of increase in intra-abdominal pressure. This means more pressure with the abdominal cavity. When you have more pressure, the veins must overcome this pressure as it drains back through the abdominal cavity. And because it's there, so much pressure in the abdominal cavity, these, these veins enlarge. And the veins being in this case is the rectal veins. They enlarge. So we look about signs and symptoms and the risk factors of hemorrhoids. On examinations, we want to position the patient into the left lateral position and feet knees up to the chest to expose the anal area. And on general inspections, external hemorrhoid may be visible. However, the use of the protoscope or an anoscope might be useful to examine for internal hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids can also be staged. The internal hemorrhoids can be staged from one to four. And it is important to stage because this means the treatment will also differ. Looking more closely at the anatomy, the middle rectal vein and the inferior rectal vein drain the anal area. The middle rectal veins drain to the inferior mesenteric vein, and the inferior rectal drains eventually into the inferior vena cava, through the podental vein. And of course, we have to remember the pectinate line or the decinate line. The internal hemorrhoid plexicide above the pectinate line and the external hemorrhoid pixel lines below the pectinate line. The internal hemorrhoid stage 1, there is a slight enlargement of the internal hemorrhoid plexus. Stage 2, 
the hemorrhoid can go past the pectinate line. Stage 3, further protruding down where it is visible in the anal sphincter. And stage 4 is where the, the hemorrhoids has fully protruded out. In an external hemorrhoid, as mentioned, the pain is there because the cells around the areas are from the ectodermal embryological origin thus causing pain. The pain is even more severe when thrombosis ex of external hemorrhoids occur. External hemorrhoids with the thrombosis can be more painful, but often resolve within two weeks. And they often also leave skin tags. So let's look at the treatment now. Treatment for stage 1 and 2 internal hemorrhoids consists of a high fiber diet, a seats bath, and a seats bath is a warm shallow bath that cleanses the perineum, which is the space between the rectum and the genital area. Steroid cream and the Pramoxine can also be used. Pramoxine is an anesthetic and antipyretic agent, so anti-itching. For stage 3 and 4, rubber band ligations can be done. For stage 3 and 4, rubber band ligations can be done. And a rubber band ligation is essentially a procedure in which the hemorrhoids are tied off at its base with a rubber band and this will cut off the blood supply. The other options include photocoagulations where infrared light is used to break down the hemorrhoid. Hemorrhoidectomy can also be performed which is essentially cutting them right out.